So it's time. It's time on this uh, Tuesday, as we approach reset day for, for this week, we went through looking at how the situation was right now in season one for the ranged DPS and the melee DPS in the last couple of days. So what is left is tanks and healers, how they have been going in the raid and in Mythic Plus, looking at how the community perception also is for all of these, uh, these specs and how meta they are and they have been so far in this season. So we are starting this uh, overview with the tanks by looking at the bottom of the barrel because this is a pretty fast one, right? It's a pretty quick pill to swallow because at the bottom of the barrel, of course, we have Guardian Druid. So um, about, about this tank, Guardian Druid has received a, mm, a significant number of changes, primarily, at least according to Blizzard, buffs given to Guardian Druid. Yet, for all of the buffs Guardian Druid received, the spec hasn't really moved that much from their initial image at the start of this uh, expansion. They are, even according to sub-creation, by looking at key levels from the plus 16 range all the way up to the highest key levels, by far the least brought and the least performing tank in Mythic Plus, even in the raid, they are also the least popular out of all of the tanks in mythic raiding compositions they have not really been doing too well in either in either of the pve activities at the very least i'm going to close the guardian druid segment by giving you some good news if you look at all of the key levels so even the lowest type of key levels from plus two to plus five to plus ten to plus fourteen at the very least Guardian Druid is actually being able to beat someone because they are beating Brewmaster Monk in popularity. That is just about the only win they are having so far in Season 1. Right after Guardian Druid, we find, however, still another spec quite low down compared to the rest of the tanks, which is Brewmaster Monk. So, Brewmaster has been living a little bit of a, of a curious situation because they started not too well this expansion and then they received quite a few decent buffs to the point where some people might have went might have tried to go the hipster way and bet on Brewmaster Monk to become some sort of dark horse for season one however that did not quite happen despite the fact by the way that Brewmaster Monks remains quite easily the highest damage dealing tank out of all of them by even something upwards of 20 percent sometimes more damage than the second best tank at doing damage which is protection warrior even with all of that damage they are still not quite good in a quite good situation for the first time in what feels like forever they have also lost their cozy tank spot we have pointed out many times how for quite a few seasons, i.e. quite a few expansions, one of the tank slots was taken by Brewmaster because Mistweaver was not really good, Windwalker was not really meta in the raid, which meant you absolutely needed one monk for the physical damage debuff, so you always brought a Brewmaster monk. Nowadays, however, ever since the the tail end of Shadowlands, Windwalker Monk also graduated as a pretty decent to good raid spec, not just confined to being good in Mythic Plus only, which meant you were no longer forced to bring a Brewmaster Monk in the raid. So in this expansion, they even lost one of their, <laughs> one of their few safety nets for being popular, which was their tank spot in the raid. So they ended up in a season being the second least popular tank in the raid as well. So you are the second least brought tank in the raid, you're also the least brought tank in Mythic Plus as well. You're basically fighting, you're fighting in a mud pit with Guardian Druid for being the not least popular tank right now as Brewmaster. Now, moving up one more rank, we are putting into the B tier Vengeance Demon Hunter. So Vengeance is here mostly because it's simply not quite as good as the other three specs above them, but still just better than the two specs below them. What I mean by that is, very simply, they are brought more 
in Mythic Plus compared to the other two tanks, they are also brought more in the raid compared to Brewmaster and Guardian Druid. They have not had nearly the same problems as the other two tanks have had in this expansion. Vengeance Demon Hunter is much more similar to the more the more meta, the more standard tanks like Protection Warrior and Blood Decay in terms of being self-sufficient and working by themselves, but this expansion has made them much more volatile, perhaps a bit too volatile for remaining very meta. So they have fallen down a bit more, but still not definitely to the same level of the two bottom tank specs for now. Instead, though, what we find into the A tier is sort of like an elevator situation, because we find blood, death knight and protection paladin. It's not that Blood Death Knight has been going down because they were nerfed, by the way. Blood Death Knight, if anything, has actually been buffed in damage quite recently. It's just that Protection Paladin has also gotten buffed too, in a very similar way to Retribution Paladin, which is also on the rise, and also there are way more, <laughs> way more buffs planned for Protection Paladin in 10.0.7. So with those buffs in mind, you also have gotten quite a few tanks, quite a few top level tanks also already switching to Prot Paladin, already starting to play Prot Paladin, which also gives a much bigger shine. It, it highlights your spec much more if top level players start playing it. And you know, the results are, the results are quite visible. You know, look at this. This is the growth of Protection Paladin. Don't pay attention, of course, to the orange line that doesn't exist. The pink line, after it got buffed, it was below Brewmaster Monk and then started rising above Brewmaster. Now it started gapping Brewmaster even more and started passing Vengeance Demon Hunter. These were the amounts of Prot Paladin in 25 plus keys just two to three weeks ago, while these are the amount of Prot Paladins in high keys right now. Basically, they doubled the amount of high keys Prot Paladin presence in just a couple of weeks. That's how fast Protection Paladin is rising. It's not that, as I mentioned, Blood Death Knight presence has been, you know, dropping drastically. It's just that with the growth of Prot Paladin, DK is somewhat losing its spark a little bit more right next to the, 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 the new flavor of the month spec at the moment, basically. However, despite Protection Paladin growing to be close to flavor of the month status, it's still not nearly as flavor of the month as the flavor of the season tank, which is Protection Warrior. Not really very surprising. Protection Warrior was the predicted best tank of season one, as the expansion released and it basically fulfilled the predictions. It definitely stayed as the best tank throughout the entire season. Not just the most popular tank in Mythic Plus, also the most popular tank in the raid as well. It is still the most popular tank even at all key levels, at you know, plus 15 key levels, plus 20 key levels, and plus 25 key levels. Protection Warrior continues its popularity dominance still. So even with the growth, the sudden growth of Protection Paladin, Protection Warrior remains for now the strongest tank overall when it comes to PvE. Now, it has been surprising, of course, that not really any major meaningful nerfs have gone Protection Warrior's way, especially since we have just come off a series of weeks of a lot of balance tuning. We have, we have checked these past few weeks a whole lot of patches and hotfixes that nerfed and buffed quite a few specs. Protection Warrior kind of got away through all of that without really getting nerfed uh, particularly hard after all. So they were able to, to go away unscathed and maintain their grip on their power as far as tanking goes so far in Season 1. We will see after 10.0.7 and the further buffs to Protection Paladin if they will remain like they have been so far this season or if they will be overtaken by Protection Paladin. So with the tanks out of the way, the next step is to look at the healers. And much like we started quite quickly to get Guardian Druid out of the way for tanks, let's start quickly to get Mystery River Monk out of the way for healers. The, you know, the explanation is more or less the same for Mistweaver as well, because they are the least 
popular as far as healing goes, more or less overall. In Mythic Plus they are the least popular in the raid, most of the time they are the least popular, sometimes they have to contend with discipline for that title, but overall they have been the, the least popular healer for quite a while, the community perception for Mistweaver has also been quite low for quite a long time, not many players are looking at Mistweaver that positively, really, so it's a, it's a no-brainer to put them down here. It's of course a little bit surprising given that Mistweaver was one of the specs which received quite a lot of positive changes in the past few weeks. The amount of hotfixes and patches which added and buffed things to Mistweaver were quite quite many, quite quite often happening, and yet still, despite all of that positivity, not much seemed to have changed for Mistweaver at the very least so far. Next in line, lonely into the C tier, we have Discipline Priest. So, Discipline Priest, much like Mistweaver, has also received a whole lot of changes. Beneficial to them, especially in Mythic Plus, given them a whole lot of new ways to play, especially around the Shadow Build version of Discipline. However, so far, that has not really proven to have so many beneficial effects, because Discipline at the moment is the least broth healer in all key levels of mythic plus doesn't matter if it's plus 5 or plus 25 discipline is still the least popular and also it's the least broth healer in the raid most of the time still the reason why they make it above mistweaver is because the people who do play with discipline priests people who do raid with discipline priests do know their importance they do know why, even though they keep seeing discipline last or close to last in so many of these type of uh, graphs about numbers, about data, yet they very often see discipline priests being brought to things like world first kills or world second, world third, you know, very high ranking kills. They see discipline priests, even though every other guide, chart or ranking they see discipline is quite low. That's because of the power they bring one that more or less they are the only ones now perhaps with the addition of evokers they can be matched sometimes but the power in their cooldowns the power in their ramp and massive large healing cooldowns they can bring plus barrier are still very very powerful in the raid so that alone that alone gives them a slight edge above mr vermonk who doesn't really have something similar something worth bringing now, after that, after the C tier, we enter the middle ground, the slash middle of the pack, which is made up by Restoration Shaman and Holy Paladin. Now, this is not as much of a double elevator, most just a single lane elevator for Restoration Shaman, who is on the up, while Holy Paladin is kind of just here and has been here for the entire expansion. Holy Paladin is not one of the most broad healer in Mythic Plus, not by a long shot, is not also one of the most broad healer in the raid, not by a long shot, but, but thanks to their raid buff required for Mythic Progression, Devotion, Aura, they are basically always present in, in Mythic groups, because Protection Paladin is not a very popular raid tank, Retribution Paladin is not a very popular raid DPS, which leaves with Holy Paladin to bring Devotion Aura. So that alone gives them a cozy, comfy spot in the raid groups. They have definitely lost their shine of the good old Ashen Hollow days of being very meta in Mythic Plus, of Shadowlands. Now they have kind of uh, not really gotten any anything anything special now when it comes to Dragonflight Mythic Plus. They have been taken over by the two specs we're going to be talking about soon. So overall, they have remained a solid middle of the pack spec. They are good in the raid, way more so than they are good in Mythic Plus at the moment. And they are definitely still more. They are definitely still more accepted than the other healers we have talked about. You know, Discipline, Mistweaver, even Resto Shaman. Usually speaking, players are more willing to try out or to be in groups with a Holy Paladin. The other spec is the spec on the rise. It's Restoration Shaman. Restoration Shaman has received massive amount of buffs, much like we talked about Mistweaver and Discipline getting buffed a lot recently. The other healer, which was buffed a lot recently, was Restoration Shaman. Much of the buffing also happened in terms of their damage, making them much more useful in Mythic Plus as well. 
not nearly as much in terms of HPS, but still good enough that it is noticeable. So Resto Shaman now has definitely gotten on the on the up and up right now. Probably, or I should say definitely, still not enough to transform them suddenly into a meta spec for this season, but it is definitely the necessary groundwork required if you were thinking about eyeing Restoration Shaman for a possible for a possible maining the spec towards season two of this expansion. You needed to fix many of the issues that Restoration Shaman had, so that is a good it's a good thing that we are starting to work on some of the issues that Restoration Shaman had right now. Especially because, and this is more important, Restoration Shaman has even more powerful buffs planned for patch 10.0.7 much like Protection Paladin. So this is definitely a good situation, a good state to be in if you're thinking about becoming, if you're hoping about becoming way more, way more considered by the community, way more meta in the near future, eyeing up, you know, the next season of this expansion for both of these specs, Prot Paladin and Restoration Shaman. So it's a good state to be in right now, even though B tier at the moment might not look that, that exciting is what I mean. Now, above Paladin and Shaman, we have an A tier populated by just one spec, which is Holy Priest. Now, this is a very political A tier, mostly given by numbers. The numbers tell us that Holy Priest is the third most brought healer in the raid and the third most used healer in Mythic Plus at all key levels. That's, that's basically the entire reason why they are here. I don't have too many positive things to say about Holy Priest. In my experience, they're not nearly as good. They don't really do anything special better than anyone else. If you are looking for burst HPS healing, you can look at Preservation Evokers. If you are looking at consistent HPS healing, you can look for Restoration Druids. If you're looking at massive impactful cooldowns, they are far below the list when it comes to healers. So overall, they are just popular. That's just all it is when it comes to this A tier for Holy Priest. Not much else to point out. It's likely, given the buffs to Resto Shaman, that they will be quickly overtaken as soon as Restoration Shaman gains more steam. So for now, Holy Priest sits at this, uh, this tier alone, but it might be challenged in the near future. What doesn't seem like it will be challenged in the near future is the S tier of this season, which is currently made up by Restoration Druid and Preservation Evoker. Now, obviously not much to talk about, much like we said about Priest, Preservation and Restoration are the top two most brought healer in the raid, at all difficulties, Heroic and Mythic, regardless, they are the most popular, and then Mythic, at all key levels, they are also the most popular. The only thing, the only thing worth noting is that at high keys, the popularity of Restoration Druid falls off a little bit, you know, once you go from keys at 20 plus or higher into keys at 25 plus or higher, the gap is much, much shorter. There is a significant growth of Evokers compared to Resto Druids, but beyond that, the formula doesn't change. The formula is that somewhere in the 80% of all healers in very high keys are either Evokers or Druids. This has been continuing pretty much since the start of the season, regardless of the amount of buffs given to the other healers. We thought maybe the party buffs, the party healing buffs and the damage buffs given to Discipline might have changed this, it absolutely didn't. We thought maybe the massive damage buffs given to Resto Shaman could have made them much more, much more reliable in Mythic Plus groups. So far, it's a no. Of course, not even worth mentioning about the buffs given to Miss Weaver Monk, that changed absolutely nothing. So, at the very least, up to now, the changes, the status quo of Mythic Plus power for healers is not changing whatsoever. When it comes to the raid, you know, both of these specs have been nerfed by some bland HPS nerfs, 3% for Resto Druid and 5% for Preservation Evoker. It does not seem to have changed that much. Some of the specs can get closer to the HPS, in, particularly in certain fights like Holy Paladin and Holy Priest, but still Restoration, Druid and Preservation Evoker remain the stronger ones. What also seems to be the bigger problem, of course, is the usage, is the power they have in their cooldowns. The fact that Preservation Evoker can cycle 
so many different cooldowns, from Stasis to Emerald Communion to Rewind to Dreamflight, while Restoration Druid can cycle the same cooldown multiple times, every single time there is something to heal, like Flourish has caused some problems for other healers to keep up, because they don't have nearly, not even remotely close, to having the same amount of impactful cooldowns, that is another issue right now in the raid. In Mythic Plus, it's more about the toolkit, it's more about the damage they can bring without having to press too many cooldowns. The Druids mostly is just dots, they can refresh. Evoker is mostly a few buttons they press at the start, and then it's mostly just some filler leaving flames. So it makes it much easier to keep up good damage while thinking about, while caring about the healing, not to mention all of the extra, the extra toolkits they have. So with these two roles being done, now we have looked at all of our roles in the game. This one somehow ended up being an even longer video than looking at the ranged or dim melee DPS, so we can't, we can't keep this going for that much longer. It's time to, to leave each other already on this Tuesday. So I'm going to leave all of our American friends to their vaults, whereas our poor European fellows will have to wait for one more day. I am starting the goodbyes, of course, by thanking all of the Patreon supporters for the contribution and the help to the growth of the channel. You can still support in other free ways, for example, liking and commenting down below or subscribing to the channel itself are good enough ways. There are other ways, like following me on Twitter or following me over at my stream on Twitch. Those would all help the growth of yours truly, provide you with more content every day. So. With this out of the way, thank you guys again for watching, see you guys soon, and in the meantime, this time it went really long. I was like, you know, tank, healer, probably should be done within 15 minutes, what the fuck is this?